Traps. This is our best date ever! I have no importance. There is nothing I can do for you. My husband. He is imprisoned in this place. Free him. Everything is... confusing. I was... a creator. The greatest of all. But I committed a sin. Now, I have only what I deserve. I'm just a merchant. And if I had a name, I do not remember it now. Open this door, and I promise you that I'll know how to thank you. The secrets, the passages, they echo in my head like screams. Stop them.
am the one who devours everything. The one who stands over creation itself. I am the power. I am nobody. I have never been. But somewhere in this prison is my wife. Free her. She will know how to reward you. Blood. I only remember the blood. What kind of monster am I? No. Don't free me. I am sorry, World Walkers. I have nothing to say.
we meet again, Wanderer of Arcane. You're different from the other shadows. Because I have awareness of everything around me? You could say that. I've seen more like you. They were locked in a prison. I tried to talk to them, but they were not lucid. Nor will they ever be as long as they're there. For many of them, that's not where they belong. In their correct rooms, they would be more... lucid, as you say. So I just need to free them? You can't release them, it would be impossible for you. The tower won't allow it. They're too entrenched in their memories. And you think that some bars will be a huge impediment? Idiot. What imprisons them may seem to be metal bars easy for you to bend and destroy. But I assure you, it's much more than that. Each place is a whole existence by itself. It's the very concept of a prison which contains them. So there's no way? I didn't say that. I said it was impossible for you. But why are you interested? Do you have some relationship with any of them? A few seem to have relevant information for us. Interesting. I think I'll help you with this. It may be worth contemplating what will happen. Can you do it? Every gate has an exit. Every prison a way out. Just as there are doors, there are also keys in the tower. I can open them. Here's one. It will open any door, but only one. Like I said, they're more in arcane. You only need to find them. But it would be better if you were both very careful when choosing which prisoners to release. Not all of them tell the truth. Not everyone deserves to be imprisoned. Not everyone deserves to be freed. Choose well. It will bring consequences. And even if you find all the keys, in the end, one door will remain locked. Now go. I'm done talking.
They say that one in every thousand people is special, and one in every million an unparalleled genius. Nascal Mayerim is one in a billion. Since childhood, he showed an inordinate talent to create, a skill that surpassed even the greatest masters of the world. With such a gift, there was never any doubt that, if he wanted, he could have become anything that he desired. But Nascal did not care for such things, for his only passion was the marionettes. When he was a little boy, his parents took him to a theater, where he saw for the first time what would become his obsession. These simple figures of wood and metal, artificial beings posing as people, fascinated him in an incomprehensible way. And it was then, at such an early age, he decided to devote his life to them. Year after year, Nascal learned everything about their construction and handling, developing unique methods to give them more realism and mobility. With time, his works became incomparable, so perfect that it was difficult to distinguish them from living beings. His marionettes were valued as masterworks and appreciated everywhere. And only now, upon turning 25, is Nascal truly pleased. Everyone recognizes that he is the greatest artist in the world.
Babe, these seals, they are linked to the paintings. Yes, there must be something in them. Babe. Yes. They say that one in every thousand people is special, and one in every million, an unparalleled genius. Nasca Little Jonathan Koppel had spent his whole life in his huge mansion without windows. He never lacked
They say that one in every thousand people is special, and one in every million, an unparalleled genius. Nascal Mayerim is one in a billion. Since childhood, he showed an inordinate talent. Little Jonathan Koppel had spent his whole life in his huge mansion without window. Jonathan couldn't believe how fascinating the outside world was. Vast green pastures spread. They say that
These seals are really powerful. I don't think that we can open them, baby. There is no time to talk, Bearer of Calamities. You have your orders. Destroy the messengers.
These seals are really powerful. I don't think that we can open them, baby.
These seals are really powerful. I don't think that we can open them, baby. Nascal entered the hall where the Council of Brax was taking place. The greatest artists and creators of the world met once every decade under those walls. Different civilizations, even non-human creatures were there to show the wonders they had created over the years. Naturally, only the very best could attend, those whose fame had crossed all frontiers. For many of them, just having been invited represented an honor, but to Nascal, it was quite the opposite. They should feel honored by his attendance. The puppet master walked through the room, trying to pass unnoticed. He paid little attention to several uninspired works that only reminded him of why he was superior to everyone else. Nascal smiled ruefully. Although he did not expect too much from others, he had wished to find something to at least rival with his talent. Lost in those thoughts, a distant word caught his attention. Someone had mentioned Godimus, the creator of wonders, whose fame had reached even Nascal's ears. Apparently he had also been invited, and a group of people were talking to him not too far away. Interested by his fame, Nascal approached him to share some anecdotes with a fellow genius. To his surprise, the legendary creator was much younger than he had expected, and was quick to shake his hand and exchange a polite greeting. Nascal was about to ask about the works he was exhibiting in the council, when the whole room became silent. Everyone whispered that Godimus had just arrived. At that moment, the confused Nascal understood what they meant, and a chill of terror ran through his spine. The person he was talking with was not a living being but a doll. Work of Godimus was what he had heard the people say before. Even if it was only for a moment, the mere idea that he had not noticed such a thing overwhelmed the mind of the puppet master. Frantically, his eyes began to gaze closely at all the works exhibited by Godimus. The mere sight of them burned his retinas, but at the same time, he was unable to look away. The feeling of anxiety that oppressed his chest grew until it became pain. He even had trouble breathing in the same room that stored such wonders. Unable to wait any more, he staggered out of the room and did not stop running until he was outside. Then, Nascal cried and laughed as hard as he could. 
He had been blind all this time. In his egotism, he thought he was on top of the world when he was only standing on a small hill. Only in that moment did he realize that his work was far from having reached its full potential. That night would change his life completely. He would create greater works. He would surpass Godimus, surpass them all. From that moment, his obsession would be perfection. They say that one in every thousand people is special, and one in every million, an unparalleled genius. Nascal Nayarim is one in a billion. Since childhood, little Jonathan Koppel had spent his whole life in his huge mansion without windows. He never lacked anything. He was surrounded by a legion of servants that took care of him with absolute
I'm just a merchant. And if I had a name, I do not remember it now. Open this door, and I promise you that I'll know how to thank you. The secrets, the passages, they echo in my head like screams. Stop them! Make them stop!
I'm... I have no importance. There is no... Everything is... I am nobody. No. Blood. I am sorry, World Walkers. I summon you, Azrael.
Azrael.
Nascal suddenly awoke. For months, he had been unable to sleep well, and that night had been particularly bad, something which he blamed on the emotion of being so close to finishing his work. Washing his face, he noticed how terrible he looked in the mirror, and thought that very soon he would have to be ready to return to society. Nascal was unsure of how much time had passed since he had visited the Council of Brax. After that night, he invested his vast fortune in creating a secluded mansion away from the civilized world. A huge and well-equipped workshop in which he could devote body and soul to his work, free from distractions. It had been years, or maybe even decades, since the last time he had contact with another human being. But loneliness meant little to him. All that mattered was that he was close to reaching his goal. Over the years, just improving his creative talent wasn't enough for Nascal. His goal was much higher. He devoted day after day to research the same process Gautamus developed to make his works, becoming an unrivaled expert in lost science and supernatural rituals. With such unusual tools, he managed to create countless animated puppets, which were able to move by themselves, the very ones that now protected his mansion and took care of its maintenance. But they were all just prototypes for his definitive work, the ultimate puppet, an artificial being so perfect it would not be aware that it was not alive. Nascal solemnly went down to the heart of his workshop, where his most valued masterpiece waited for him. On the table was a body. Any observer would think without a doubt that it was a true human being. It had the same appearance as its creator, as identical as two drops of water. The master puppeteer smiled. In his next encounter with Gautamus, it would be his marionette that greeted him. An ironic joke that only he would be able to understand. After reviewing the status of the project for hours, Nascal determined that it was only a matter of days until it was finished. Only a few pieces were missing, which should be stored in his secondary workshop. With unusual anxiety, he walked to the North Wing in search of them. It had been a long time since he had visited that area of the mansion, and he was not even really sure of why he stopped going there. Upon entering the room, the master puppeteer was struck by the terrible state of the place. He didn't remember having forsaken it for so long. Without giving it too much thought, Nascal walked to where the pieces were stored, but he saw something in his way which puzzled him. There, sitting in the workshop, was a corpse holding the parts Nascal had come for. His flesh, rotted and dried, was in pretty bad shape, suggesting that it had been in that place for a long time. Surprised, Nascal approached to examine the body, but before he could do so, the puppet master became completely paralyzed with terror. Because, despite being worn and wasted, there was no doubt. The corpse had exactly the same face as him.
Jonathan couldn't believe how fascinating the Little Jonathan Koppel had spent his whole life in his huge mansion without windows. He never lacked anything. He was surrounded by a legion of servants that took care of him with absolute devotion. All of them wore strange masks and acted in a cold and distant way, but took care of him like he was the only thing that mattered in the world. From them, the boy learned the most exquisite manners, and to act like a gentleman of the highest rank. When the young one asked why he was there, his servants always told him that his parents had to go They say that one in every thousand people is special, and one in every million, an unparalleled genius. Nascal Mayerim is one in a billion. Since childhood, he showed an inordinate talent Nascal entered the hall where the Council of Brax was taking place. The greatest artists and creators of the world met once every decade under those walls. Different civilizations, even non-human creatures were there to show the wonders they had created over the years. Naturally, only the very best could attend, those whose fame had crossed all frontiers. For many of them, just having been invited represented an honor, but to Nascal, it was quite the opposite. They should feel honored by his attendance. The puppet master walked through the room, trying to pass unnoticed. He paid little attention to several uninspired works that only reminded him of why he was superior to everyone else. Nascal smiled ruefully. Although he did not expect too much from others, he had Nascal entered the hall where the Council of Brax was taking
What was a human being? What exactly was he? Nascal didn't know for how long, years perhaps, he had asked the same questions without finding an answer. Was the dead body in the workshop the real Nascal? But if it was, why did it hold the parts needed to complete the project? The puppet master had his body analyzed several times over the years, trying to find something that could help him determine if he was a man or a marionette. In his research, Nascal severed some of his limbs, replacing them with metal implants, an irony that even he could see. Desperate, he began to consider using other humans as guinea pigs for research. However, after all of his sacrifices, he was still not even one step closer to finding the truth. But what if, if none of that mattered, people, puppets, what if there had never been any difference from the start? This formula, it emanates a different energy from the rest of this place. What was a human being? What exactly was he? Nascal didn't know for how long, years. Nascal suddenly awoke. For months, he had been unable to sleep well, and that night had been particularly bad, something which he blamed on the emotion of being so close. Nascal entered the hall where the Council of Brax was taking place. The greatest artists and creators of the world met once every decade under those walls. 
different civilizations, even non-human creatures were there. They say that one in every thousand people is special, and one in every million, an unparalleled. They say that one in every thousand people is special, and one in every million, an unparalleled genius. Nascal Mayerim is one in a billion. Since childhood, he showed it. Nascal. Nas. What? Little. John. The. How much time? How much time?